All right, and our final speaker, again, another social media friend that I met through networking, um, Asher, Asher J. Bell. He's gonna be a real treat for you guys. Asher J. Bell, first and foremost, Asher is a man of God and a servant of people. He is a husband and a father of one son and a son on the way, which arrived last week, late last week, so give it up for them in the new home <laughs> is also a licensed real estate agent, a mortgage loan originator in the state of California. Asher has been a top producer in a Fortune in a four Fortune 50 companies. Asher has also been ranked in the top 2% in San Joaquin County in his first three years as a real estate professional in the industry. He has been leading others and running teams since 2011 and seeks to lead by example and encourage his family, friends, and peers to have a relationship with God and become the best version of themselves. Please give it up for my good friend, Asher J. Bell. Another round of applause for Isaiah. I'm just standing on the stage. It's not like I'm not already tall, but I just like to feel tall. Anybody else want to be tall? Okay, we got a couple of people. Um, but first and foremost, I mean, we just got to give some credit to Isaiah for coordinating, planning. Um, you know, events are, are not easy to get this many people in a room, especially on this first event. This is huge. Um, and I just want to say that. Today with scripture. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. It is trust in the Lord completely and lean not on your own understanding and acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your paths. So, why is that verse important to me? Because in life, we always think we know best, right? And we're going to run into challenges and we're going to have struggles and we're going to have trials and tribulations and things are going to come to test us. And what I have found personally with building my relationship with Jesus Christ is that when I lean on him for understanding, he always directs my path. I may not understand it while I'm going through what I'm going through, but as I'm going through it, I always seem to find my way because I'm leaning on him for strength and understanding. So moving into the topic of discussion for the day is keep going, right? That's, that's why we came here tonight to learn a little bit more about how to keep going, right? Everybody here wants to keep going. That's why you came to this event tonight. I know I drove three hours to be here because I have that keep going mindset, right? And it is a mindset. Everything is conceived as a thought before it ever materializes into anything. It's a thought, right? So if we start with our mindset of I'm going to keep going no matter what, it's going to take drive, it's going to take discipline as um, is it Guillermo. As Guillermo mentioned and, and spoke, um, very prominently about is having that discipline. But there's three main things that I want to talk about specifically, and that is your passion, that's your purpose, and that's your plan. So it doesn't matter if you're 5, 25, or 55, you still have time. As long as you're breathing and as long as you have a pulse, you still have time. And guess what? Each and every one of you in this room has and, it, and a, just an amazing amount of potential within you. So if you ever get stuck in a rut where you start to feel like, hmm, it's too late for me, or I'm too young, or I'm not smart enough, I don't have enough resources, I don't have enough connections, I don't have the right association. Well, these all sound like thoughts, and that all comes down to your mindset, right? And you're starting to speak these things verbally, and what you speak becomes your reality because it's conceived inside, and then in your subconscious, you start to believe what you talk about, and you start to believe what you say about yourself, and, that's, and that all comes into your identity. You're forming your identity by the words that you speak and the thoughts that you think. So you need to start thinking positively. You gotta think about keep going. How do I keep going? Passion. One of the things that I'm passionate about is my family. As you can see, I've got my wife in the back, um, and she is my wife, along with our son, our newborn son. His name is Jerome Jakari Bell, and we have another son. His name is Asher James Bell Jr., um, taken after his father. So I have two young boys, and this is my wife. This is my driver. This is what keeps me going when things get tough and when I want to give up. And when I have problems that just come and just seem to block my way, I have to think 
think about why I'm doing what I'm doing. Why is this so important to me? Why does this even matter? Why am I here? Right there, that's my why. And it keeps me going. So you need to clearly identify your why. But then let's go back to passion. I'm very passionate about my family. That's my why. So when it comes time for me to have to dig deep, I can't give up because I can't let them down. I cannot fail. There is no failure. I don't even think failure. It's never a loss. It is always a lesson. There's always a lesson hidden in between the lines of problems. Problems are just lessons. Problems help you get better. Problems make you stronger. Problems build your character. Without problems, you're not going to get stronger because you're not going to be tested. I like to work out. I work out about two to three times a week. I've been an athlete all my life. And guess what? Every time I go to the gym, I challenge myself. I go on acting. Those weights are those problems. Right? And I deal with a lot of people. I'm in real estate. I sell real estate. I help people buy and sell homes. So I deal with a lot of other people's problems too. So it feels like I'm carrying a lot. So when I go to the gym, I take those weights and I put them on. Here we go with a 45 here and a 45 there. All right, and I warm up. And I start to stretch those muscles. I start to challenge myself, right? And I start to take on those problems. And then I just start to push it out, push it out, push it out. And what does that do for me? It starts to create a mentality that I'm strong, that I can do this, that I can push through. And I'm gonna push through to the next rep and the next rep and the next rep and the next rep. And that helps me build that identity that I'm strong and I'm powerful and that anything that it comes against me that I can push through it, right? And it all comes back to my passion. And I like to feel, I like to be strong. I live strong and everything that I do, I apply strength because I know how to build strength. That's a passion for me. So you gotta start to ask yourself, what are you passionate about? Are you passionate about writing? Are you passionate about singing? Are you passionate about dancing? Are you passionate about um, telling stories? Are you passionate? What are you passionate about? If you can't figure out what you're passionate about, just take a quick second to think about what you like to do. You're passionate about something. Could it be sleeping? You might be passionate about something. I don't know um, how, what sleep is going to uh, uh, get you in life besides some good rest, right, and some rejuvenation. But you're passionate about something. Ask yourself, what are you passionate about? Really take some time to think about that. How can you turn your passion into your purpose, leading into my next topic, purpose? So how did I find my purpose? Well, I started with my passions. Um, other things that I like to do is I make music. I'm an artist. I rap. I write. I write for other people. Um, and I like to skateboard as well. Um, I don't look like skateboarders. Not so many tall skateboarders. But yeah, I like to skateboard. I skateboard for like 22 years now. Yeah, I can still get on and jump off stairs and, you know, almost crack my head up and scare my wife to half to death. And it's actually the best time to me, right, because I'm still challenging my limits. But I looked at my passions and I also said, what is another thing that I like? I said, I, like, I enjoy working with people. That's why I'm in the people business. Um, real estate by trade, but I'm in the people business. I serve people. I like to work with people. I like to help people solve their problems. I like to help people get from point A to point B. They come to me with a request, and I want to provide a solution. I found out that I like to work with people at a young age because I'm very social. In high school, I, I, you know, I was a class clown. I like to goof off because I like to make people laugh. That was a passion for me because I started to see the reaction that I can give other people. I can make people smile, and and I started to say, hmm, you know what? This, this is kind of fun to me. It doesn't even feel like work when I'm working with people. So I became passionate about working with people. And little did I know that that passion was going to turn into my purpose. As a matter of fact, I already had a purpose, right? When, when before I was conceived in my mother's womb, God had formed me there intricately. Um, and I was fearfully and wonderfully made. But before I was even born, I had a purpose. And when I came out, I still had a purpose. Today I have a purpose, but I want each and every one of you to know that you have a purpose, a specific purpose. And it correlates directly to your passion. So figure out what you're passionate about, and that transcends into your purpose. Many of you have already found your purpose, okay? And for those of you that have found your purpose, let's go into the third point. Let's talk about a plan. Do you have a plan? Guess what? It's okay if you do, and it's okay if you don't. Let me tell you why. 
Of course, if you have a plan, right, then you're planning for success, right? You clearly have an objective in mind, you have a destination in mind, right? You have a course of action in mind. What are you gonna do to accomplish this goal? You have it outlined, you've, you've, you've thought it through, you've got wise counseling, that people look over your plan, great. And then what about the people that don't have a plan? That's okay too, because every day you have a new opportunity to start new. So I encourage you, if you don't have a plan, then you're planning to fail. Because we can aim one, we can wander and, and aimlessly through our lives without a plan. But those who figure out what their passion is, and then they figure out what their purpose is, and then they start to plan, well, I guarantee you, if you work your plan, it will work. How many of you guys believe that? Do you believe if you have a plan and you work it, it will work? But what happens when you get tired? What happens when you get burnt out? What happens when something very tragic happens in your life? Wow, Whew. man, lost my job, wrecked my car, dad was diagnosed with cancer, whatever the case may be, what happens when that happens? You have to remember your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you here today? Why is it that you want to do what you're doing? And that why has to be so strong. It has to be strong. It has to make you cry. Have you heard that saying? Your why isn't strong enough if it doesn't make you cry. It has to be something that's going to cause you to dig deep. There's no way. If my wife and my son, we were on a boat, and guess what that boat tipped over? I'll be willing to risk my life to make sure that they get safe and sound ashore. If it caused me to put my life on the line, that's how serious your why has to be. Because when things happen in life and you're able to get through them, it's gonna come down to your why. Is your why strong enough to push you through those things? Because trust me, you're gonna get tired. You're gonna get frustrated. You're gonna get irritated. You're gonna have bumps in the road. You're gonna come up against people that are gonna be against you. You're gonna come up against things and obstacles that are going to be against you. But then you lean back and you step back and you think about your why, why am I doing this? Why am I here? What is my passion? What is my purpose? What is driving me to do what it is that I'm doing right now? What gets me out of bed every single day? Think about that why. Think about it. Take a second. Think about your why right now. What is it? Is it your family? If you don't have a family, is it your future? Right? Is it the life that you want to live? It all starts with a thought. So when you clearly can outline your passions, and you can think about your plan, and you can think about your purpose. Now you're creating an outline, right? And when you start to make your plan, how many here believe that if you had to go to war, would you want to plan it out, or would you just go out there and just grab your sword and your shield and just go run out there and just start, hey, who wants to fight? I don't, I don't know if you're going to be that successful, right? Any great king, whenever they went to war, they planned. They had generals, they had lieutenants, um, right? As you know, every, everything is going to be planned out thoroughly. You don't just run out into battle without a plan. So why would you live your life without a plan? Right? You're planning to fail. So I'm going to go ahead and move into my life, my story, and I'm going to be brief with it. So I'm 34 years old in September. I'll be 34 September 14th of this year. I been in sales, technology sales, for 11 years, starting with AT&T, moving into Comcast business, back to AT&T, worked for Verizon as well, sold cybersecurity, fiber optic, um, internet um, to companies across the country. So this is where I started to begin my sales career, and I bought my first house in 2018. Why is that significant? Well, first and foremost, I didn't believe that I could own a house. I thought it was just this pie in the sky goal. I was like, how am I ever going to afford to buy a house? You need how much for a down payment? A hundred thousand dollars? Are you kidding me? Where am I going to get that type of money? I got to hit the lot. I started buying scratchers. I said, this isn't going to work. I said, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not getting a house, right? It was my mindset. But my cousin bought a house. And I was talking to my uncle one day, and he goes, nephew, he said, if your cousin can do it, you can do it too. And then I saw him do it, and I said, hey, they're just like me. And I said, you know what? I think I can do it. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, right? The little train, the little engine I could. I started to believe, oh my goodness, that's dangerous. It's very dangerous when you start to believe. A mustard seed of faith can move mountains. 
it is so dangerous when you start to believe in yourself. Oh my goodness, if you start to truly believe what it is that you're thinking about, what you dream about, what you when you're sleeping, something that you just can't get away from, it's just it's chasing you. When you start to believe that you can do it, oh my goodness, you can do it. You can do it. If you believe you can do it, you can do it. It starts with your mindset. You gotta be able to keep going, right? Because there's going to be a lot of things that's going to try to steal your dreams. It's going to try to crush your dreams. But you got to believe that you can do it. That's the first step in accomplishing anything. you got to believe you can do it. I started to believe in myself. I was like, hmm, they could care about a house. So I worked really hard. I was at Comcast Business back in, I started in 2014. And I worked my butt off. Um, I, I sold internet to, if you talk to me, you're buying internet. You would get a second internet connection now, you know, just in case the first one went out. Um, you were getting internet, you were getting something when you talked to me. Uh, so I worked really hard and I contributed a, a lot of money to my 401k and I was talking to my uncle, he's an HR manager for UPS, he's retired now, but he told me, he said, Nephew, you know that uh, you can use uh, some of the money in your 401k to buy a house. I was like, really? I was like, okay. Um, but I prayed on it, and I prayed on it, and I prayed on it for those four years, right? I knew I could do it, I believed in myself, and I just continued to work hard. I kept going, kept going, kept working, I kept going, I kept going. And then it just dawned upon me, I said, you know what, I think I'm ready. Something was weird, it was just like an instinct. I said, I think I'm ready. So I go and I look at my account, wow, didn't realize I had that much money in there. I was like, wow, I got money. I'm not broke anymore. I have some money, I have saved some money. Um, so I was excited, and then I went and got pre-approved. And they're like, hey, you're pre-approved. And I was like, oh my gosh, is, is this really happening? I'm gonna buy a house, I'm gonna buy a house. And then I start to look for a house. Me and my wife, we looked for a house for one week. Matter of fact, it wasn't even a full week. I think it was about four or five, about five days we looked for our home. And we looked from afar, right? We lived in the Bay Area. We were on Zillow, Grocery.com, all those sites, and we were looking for our home, and we found this home that we really liked. And it just felt right to both of us. There were some things that I wish I could have had on my first home, but it still checked off enough boxes for us. So, talked to my real estate agent at the time and put the offering. I said, put the offering. Oh, like a mom box. I said, put the offering. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he puts the offer in, right? This is a Friday um, afternoon and Saturday, uh, no, Friday morning. So, Friday afternoon, he gets a call. Ring, ring. Hey, I got great news for you. I'm like, what is it? He's like, they sent you an offer. Whoa! Felt like Ric Flair. I'm like, I'm getting your house. This is the most exciting thing that could have ever happened. I thought about this a while ago. I believed in myself. I believed I could do it. I worked hard. I kept going. I kept going, and it happened. Oh my goodness! Do you know what that did for me in my mind? It gave me confidence. It gave me confidence in myself. I said, Wow. Let's look at what just happened here. I saw somebody else do something that I wanted to do. Then I started to say to myself, I think I can do that. I think I can. It's just a small mustard seed of faith. I said, I think I can do this. And then I started to work a plan. I started to work my plan. I started planning and then I started working my plan. It took me four years. It took me some time. And you better believe there were some challenges. There were lots of challenges. As a matter of fact, when I first, when the, when the plan was composed in my mind, I had a 586 credit score. I had some work to do. I mean, the bill collectors were calling me. I mean, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't easy. But I continued, I just kept going. I said, you know what, I already know what I want. I identified what I wanted. And I said, okay, that's what I want. And this is the work that I have to do. So I did the work. Man, we could just talk about that for, hours and hours just doing the work. We all have goals, we have dreams, we have aspirations, we have things we want, places we want to go. Um, but are you willing to do the work? When you see the work and you see the work that it takes for you to be successful in anything, are you willing to do the work consistently and diligently? I did the work, I kept doing the work, I did the work, I did the work, and it happened, I bought my first home. Where am I going with this? Well, first of all, just going back to that belief in myself of, wanting to do something and then planning to do something and then working that plan and then I achieved it. My God, I built confidence in myself at that point in time. I said, wow, anything that I believe I can do, I can do. 
and then that just transcended into a mindset. I can do anything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things through Christ who strengthens me. There's nothing that I can't do. Anything that I want is not without a reason. But I have to believe that I can do it. And I'm willing to put in the work. And I'm willing to be patient for the results. Because it doesn't happen overnight. So, now, bought the first house, right? Through the process, I'm a inquisitive. I'm a salesperson. So I started talking to my realtor. I said, hey, man. Well, like, hey, come on, come on, come on. Like, how much are you going to make on this? How much are you going to make it off of me? I'm a sales guy. I'm like, what does the commission check look like? And he goes, oh, I'll make about 12 grand. I was like, oh, my God. I said, excuse me, how much? He said, he shrugged his shoulders and knocked on something. He's going to make about 12 grand. I said, oh, yeah. I said, how do I get my license, sir? He said, can you tell me how to get my license? I felt like I was like looking for drugs. I was like, how do I get that, how do I get that license? <laughs> So I'm going to tell him to get that license, please. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I needed that license. He said, and then we're going to talk about taking action, massive action. So he tells me, he said, here, I'm going to send you a link. Here's how you buy your courses. Here's how you start the process to get your license. He sent me that link that night. I bought the courses, and I jumped in. Eight weeks later, I went through every course. I'm working a full-time sales job. Um, after work, I was disciplined enough, and I went straight into studying, and I knocked those courses out. And guess what happened? I went in, I applied for my test. What do you guys think happened? No. I failed. I failed the first time. I was devastated. I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting my license. I'm going to be rich. Woo! And then I went in and I failed. Do you know how crushed I was when I failed that test? I quit. I failed in October, I quit. So I can't do that. So I didn't go to college. I'm not that smart. I started to speak negatively about myself. My God, you know how powerful your words are? Because I started to believe those words. I started to believe it. I said, oh, I can't do this. No way. That test is way too hard. This isn't for me. It's for the smart people. I started to believe it. And then something just stirred up inside of me. Something just stirred up because it was a part of my purpose. Because I had started something, and I've never walked away from anything in life. I'm a finisher, and I don't like to feel defeated. Never, ever just taking defeat. It was always going to be a lesson for me. And something stirred up inside of me in my gut. I said, you know what? i got to do this. i got to go back. i got to go try this thing one more time. So December took me two, uh, two months. A little over two months because it's the beginning of October. So December, I go back in, I apply for that state exam, and I study my blood out all through December. And I actually took my test right before Christmas. Boy, did I set myself up. You know how much anxiety that was? I'm planning for Christmas and an exam. I almost lost my marbles. But you know what? I was determined. I was determined. I was not going to let that test come for me. No way. I said, this is the bridge between goals and accomplishments is discipline. I knew that. I said, if I put in the work, I said, there's no way. I'll go in there and take this test a thousand times until I pass. So I go back in. I take the test. What do you guys think happened? What do you guys think? Oh, yeah, I didn't want to answer it the first time. Everybody's like, you passed. No, I didn't pass. I didn't pass. What do you guys think happened? How many people think I passed in the room? Y'all have no faith in me, huh? <laughs> That's for all two of y'all, all two of y'all. Um, how many of you guys think I failed? Look at y'all, just planning my downfall. Look, just plotting on me. You don't want me to succeed? I went in there and I passed that test. Because <laughs> I didn't give up. That's right. I fell down, I was knocked down. But I got back up. I was, I, was in, I was on my back. The referee, one, two, three, woke up, dusted myself off, got some water, and I got back in the fight, and I studied. I studied harder than I'd studied for anything in my life, and I went back in, and I passed the test. Woo! Do you know what happened to me at that point in time? Confidence. It built confidence within me. I said, wow. 
first I was able to overcome this huge goal, this pie in the sky goal that I was gonna buy, that I could never buy a house, and then I believed in myself, and then I went and I did it. And then it's another huge challenge for me. I didn't like books, I wasn't a studious person, I wasn't the best um, student. But I overcame that test after failing. I said, wow, this is building my character. I am more than a conqueror. Anything that I wanna do, I can do it. If I'm willing to put in the work. And if I get knocked down, if I get back up, I started to learn these things. I said, wow, I just gotta keep going. I just had to keep, that was it. I just had to keep going. I got knocked down, I got hit, I got punched, I got kicked, I got stunned, I was hurt emotionally, I was depressed, I was sad, I was discouraged. But I kept going. Wow, those are two major instances that instances in my life that have really helped develop a mindset of having to keep going. So now I'm licensed as a realtor. This is June of 2019. This is huge for me. I said, wow, I'm an entrepreneur now. Oh, I hadn't made one dollar yet. I was already talking like I was just, you know, a Fortune 50 company myself. I had not made a dollar yet, but I had the mindset. I said, I'm going to be successful because now I've learned some things. I've learned that if I believe in myself, I can achieve anything. I learned that if I put in the work, it will work. I learned that if I get knocked down and I get back up, oh my gosh, I'm going to win. You can't beat somebody who doesn't quit. You can't lose if you refuse to forfeit. That sounds like a rhyme. Why don't you put that in a song, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm only trying to say, look, if anybody comes out with a song, copyright infringement, right? I'm filing a lawsuit. Um, anyways, um, so let me wrap this up. So I was working a full-time sales job at at and I'm selling tech, I'm selling across the country to big companies, right? And then I started selling real estate in June of 2019. And I already had a drive in me, right, because I knew how to develop business from my sales career. So I started to build this real estate business and it was tough. I said, wow, people aren't spending, you know, a couple thousand dollars, they're spending hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. It's a big decision. And I gotta get people to trust me, I gotta build my brand. How are people gonna believe in me to spend this much money? This is huge. But you know what I did? I said, I think I can. I think I can do it. I think I can do this. I'm doing it. So six months goes by. You know, I sold about three homes in the first six months. And uh, I was like, okay, that, that was cool. Get the wheels turning, I'm building some momentum in 2020, and I'm working a full-time sales job, and I'm in the top 1% at at and I'm ranked across the country at at and so I am working 14, 12 to 14 hours a day. I'm just driven. I'm driven, you know why? Because I'm providing a life for my family that I never had, right? That's my why. But fast forward, 2020, so 13 houses, basically averaging out to about a house a month. That's, that's not usual, right? Doing it part-time. But I was so driven, my why was so important. I knew I had potential and I believed in myself. You have got to believe in yourself. It has to be real. You have to internalize it. Oh my goodness, how do you think companies were created? The Marriott, how do you think this, comp this hotel conglomerate was created? Started with somebody believing in themselves. It started somewhere. If we take it back to the start, Oh, somebody had to believe in themselves. And I encourage each and every one of you in this room to really dig deep and believe. Do not doubt yourself. Do not doubt yourself. Doubting yourself is basically just telling yourself, nope, I can't do it. And guess what? You're not going to do it. But if you tell yourself you can do it, you think you can do it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> absolutely. And I'm living proof of that. So fast forward to 2021. I'm selling houses now. I'm starting to build a business. So 26 homes last year. And I did that also part-time while being a, a top producer in sales. And am I saying this to boast about No, I was driven. I was driven so much by my why, and I had my passion identified, I had my purpose identified, and I had my plan, and I was working it. So now, I quit my job last year in July of um, 2021. Oh yeah, please clap for me, because this is scary. Every single day I wake up, I'm scared. Right? Because I never want to get there.
there and do it for myself. I'm not doing it for somebody else. I'm building my dream. I'm building my legacy. I'm building my footprint. And I'm going to leave my mark on this earth. But every day I wake up, it's on me to have the discipline. It's on me to be aware. Right? It's on me to wake up every single day and go put the work in. Because if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it for me. It's simple, but we make it hard. When you make excuses, you just tell yourself, I don't want it that bad. If you don't do what you need to do every day, you don't want it. Yeah, I'm, the first per I'm not the first person to tell you that. I'm sure of it. Right? But discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. So now I'm doing real estate full time. Um, and I'm building this business, and it's just an amazing story, right, that I have to tell because it all started with a belief that I could do it. And then it started with me turning my passion into my purpose. Then I developed a plan, and I worked the plan. And when I got knocked down, I got up. And guess what? Every single time I won, you will never lose if you never quit. So now I'm gonna give you guys just a little snippet of some of the music that I make. Now, another thing is, you can't be scared to be yourself. And there's only one of you. You are one of one, you are so unique. There are so many other people in this world trying to be other people than themselves. If you start to be yourself and be in your skin and be comfortable in your skin and love yourself, guess what? That's where you're really gonna shine. So I started to write raps about real estate. Who does that? Oh my goodness, what am I thinking? I had to figure out how to stand out. And guess what? When I met, this isn't my first real estate song. I got several. But the first real estate song that I wrote, it blew up. It went viral. Everyone loved it. I was like, oh my goodness, you guys like it? I'm like, seriously, you guys like it? People loved it. I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't doubt myself. Right, and I wasn't scared to be myself. And ladies and gentlemen, this is some of the music that I make. Songs called I Got What You Need, featuring my boy Adrian Rojo, who just got signed. Um, but go ahead and play that uh, video. You guys mind if I sing along? I don't sing, I rap, so you mind if I rap along? Is that okay? You put in the work and you just keep going, you can do it too. That's my time. 